Can you just tell me a little bit about your field of expertise, like, you know, about who you teach, teaching, education, this kind of, or anything about your interests? And yeah, well, I'm interested in basically the broad area of literacy development, and in that, both among uh, monolinguals and bilinguals, and uh, from uh, different um, language structure, or what we call orthographies, and also um, because I have a joint appointment with education and psychology. I'm also interested in uh, why children have difficulty learning to read and write and what teachers can do and what they are doing and what they are lacking. So, about the broad area of teacher knowledge. So, that's another area that I'm interested in. Okay, great. So, um, one thing that we're interested in is. Uh, context mm -hmm. because you know a, a lot of the publications uh, or a lot of the things in books that we know about reading kind of are coming from Canada the UK Australia or the US where the context might be different from some other places in the world where there are hu huge populations mm -hmm. can you say anything about contextual differences I mean, uh, when you say contextual differences I mean not only that uh, in terms of population, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there are countries like China and India with large population and uh, they also don't have access, especially from India and perhaps in African context, that uh, they may not have access to books, the basic needs of uh, learning to read and write and uh, um, large classroom size and uh, I already mentioned about the lack of uh, uh, materials, the books, the writing, the, you know, reading books and writing books and so on. And I think on top of that, uh, uh, in many in rural areas, in many countries, uh, children have to walk a long distance and perhaps education might be secondary because they also have to take care of uh, the helping the parents in the field and so uh, I think that those are some different contexts and in addition to that uh, in you mentioned about the UK, Australia and other countries the spoken language and the, uh, meta, uh, the uh, medium of instruction um, would perhaps be the same in most instances sure we have in the US we have you know children coming from Spanish uh, language background and they will learn to read in English uh, but that is a uh, mm, smaller percentage compared to the uh, those who speak English and learn to read and write in English in US and other countries whereas in many of the African countries and India and other countries so the spoken language at home uh, may be one and in some instances they may not even have the script or the written counterpart of the spoken language and then they go to school and so they will learn to read in a language that they don't speak and a lot of studies have shown that spoken language is a major influence on the written language so they don't have that and then you go and also, uh, in many of these countries, uh, even they have the script, the spoken language may be one, but when they go to uh, school, they have to learn an entirely different language that, that they are not being exposed to uh, uh, spoken format. And uh, in addition to that, uh, um, in India especially, they have uh, three language formula in which every child must be exposed to three different languages and we have we know that children may have difficulty learning to read in one language on top of that and also particularly from the Indian context when I say different language or different orthography it is not even like the English and Spanish in the sense they share at least some alphabet some sounds and some cognates but in Indian context uh, they don't, they may not even share any, you know, very few common words, cognates, uh, if at all, and uh, the, the written part from one language to another, they are almost as different as, 
as English and Chinese or English and Arabic. There are no scripts, and in some instances, the directionality of writing is different. And also, if you go a little bit deeper, uh, the um, like uh, um, in for instance, in English, you know where the word boundary is. Uh, in some languages, uh, they don't even have it. Looks one long sentence, and so there are, in terms of context, a wide variety of uh, um, differences. Mm -hmm. And what it would be the largest classroom, just the largest number of kids in a classroom you've ever heard of? Uh, I have witnessed uh, as many as eighty students wow. in one. And what grade was that? Like grade one. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, and one other thing, and we know that uh, um, majority of the students in these like English-speaking countries and uh, UK, Australia, Canada, they don't, they uh, are not uh, completely proficient or. Um, in some basic concepts like what is a morpheme, what is a phoneme, and how many phonemes are there, and what is the difference between a uh, free morpheme and bound morpheme, and things like that. So, uh, in terms of the content knowledge, I know that many teachers are poor in these English speaking countries that we have conducted some research. However, if you extend it further, that, like for instance, again, I can give an example in India, and this is true in some of the African countries that, uh, um, like when they have to teach English, many teachers themselves are not proficient in English, not only the concepts, but even the spoken. And so they speak, they teach English through their mother tongue. Uh -huh. okay. hmm. yeah. So, can you tell us a little bit about some of the basics of an akshara? I mean, we're talking a little about the, the alphabet and how that works. Uh, can you tell us like a very basic idea about how you Yeah, uh, generally I think the, uh, there is some recent proposals uh, that uh, akshara should be classified as a separate uh, uh, system. Uh, Formerly, it has been referred to an alpha syllabic language where the smallest written unit is a syllable, uh, but the um, the vowel is inherent in the written uh, akshara. Uh, and so, I think, and if I understand it correctly, unlike Korean hangul it is not added uh, uh, from the consonant and then you add the vowel in uh, alpha, syllabic, alpha syllabic languages, if I understand correctly. But uh, in akshara, it is already there. Uh, and uh, for me, even though it is at the syllable level, it is different from the uh, kana syllable. Because kana syllable, you really cannot identify the phonemic representation. Whereas in Akshara, uh, you can, even though it is not written, it, you, one can write it, but people don't write it. Okay, mm -hmm. It is possible to represent the phoneme uh, like uh, the English alphabet at, the, at that level, but we do not do that. But we can identify it is already in there. It is not um, uh, as um, confusing or uh, as indirect as the Kana syllable. Uh, in Akshara, you can identify where the phonemic value is there, and then on top of that, you add um, the uh, vowel. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, some of the difficulties uh, um, compared to say English in Akshara is, and these vowel signs they can go above, below after or before so those vowel signs that are that come before for instance key like the lock and key and it is written e -k. okay so the child has the difficulty the sound comes after key the e comes later after k. 
but it is written <laughs> like it is ink. So that's one. There are you know several uh, 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 kind of differences uh, or that difficulty uh, like. Uh, even though uh, Akshara is highly transparent, uh, um, basically 99% um, of the time, uh, there is only one way that uh, you can pronounce the Akshara and there is only one way once you pronounce it to represent it. So it is what we call the both forward and backward. Uh, it is highly transparent. but even there is a lot of uh, uh, visual complexity that makes it learning to read difficult. Uh, for instance, uh, just one simple dot uh, can change the whole sound. You have to have that and or the length, for instance, in uh, my native language, which is Canada. So there is a big difference between B and J. So um, the pronunciation, the sound, but B is if you just make the tail little longer, so there is no size of how long it should be, just whether it is short, long, it can same, change the whole thing. Uh -huh. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what makes reading in Akshara easy and hard? Any, any yeah, well, uh, it is easy because basically it is one to one correspondent. Basically, even though like. There are some uh, uh, strange things, like I mentioned, you know, when you write ki, but you, uh, when you say ki, it is written ik, okay? Uh, that's uh, difficult, strange or different, uh, but once you learn that, it is easy. It applies to all the uh, small e or short e sound. So whether it is ki, p, g, b, Whatever it is, it's always at the back. So that remains constant, but uh, the, the very high visual complexity. And also, um, we can have um, C for consonant and V for vowel. So we can have a C, 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 V. So the one akshara can have CCCV representation. Wow, wow, yeah. So that makes it very complex. And also, in English, we kind of sort of have that, uh, like uh, the uh, uh, lowercase j and the uppercase j, they are different, even though you just, but the basic structure is the same and you put it out, but you know, like in H and H, uh, they do. So we have that in Canada also and so um, not the um, uppercase lowercase but whether it is represented completely or like C would be one uh, for instance and CC would be different so in addition to the complete character then we also have the shortened form of that okay, okay. so CCCV that one it is really complex. So uh, it is complex, but it is transparent. Thank you. Um, so I have two more questions. One is, um, when you think about reading around the world, and you think about say how people talk about reading English, are there things that would be useful to tell teachers about how uh, children learn to read in, in different? places, particularly in India. You've already said some about this. I'm yeah, curious. the English, just in, teaching English? Or teaching Italian or French or an alphabetic. Yeah, well, um, we conducted one study because the, um, because the Indian Akshara system, you can represent, even though people don't do that, but it is possible to identify the phonetic element. So we use that to teach English because you have to have the phonetic representation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had good success with it. Uh, but uh, not many teachers know about that. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and it is still uh, rote memory, memorization, and uh, um, why do we write uh, uh, babies with B-A-B-I-E-S and cats with C-A-T-S just because my teacher told me so. Mm -hmm. okay. So a lot of rote memorization, even teachers themselves may not know why it is so. And what advice do you have for teachers on how to teach better? That's well, very general. I mean. Yeah, well, but you know, uh, actually they have to know about the language constructs and uh, um, broadly speaking, they should uh, be familiar with the current research, what the research has shown about how to teach reading and writing, but generally it is not filtered to teachers. So she, teachers should be knowledgeable about the language constructs, not only in beginning reading, but also uh, in, in the reading to learn state, the comprehension, the vocabulary. And uh, um, it is also true that because in Indian Akshara system, uh, very similar to English borrowed from Latin and uh, Greek, so English, almost all of the Indian writing system Aksharas have the Sanskrit uh, foundation. So, by teaching that, you can improve the morphemic analysis and uh, so those are the aspects that our teachers have to be knowledgeable and then it goes one step further about the, they should be prepared well at the university level. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I don't think that's happening in many places. Okay. So, what are some of the basic concepts that you think that teachers need to know about, say, linguistically, like you've mentioned, morpheme, so, um, transparency, phonemes. Uh, you know, even uh, in the uh, Akshara system, you can trace it to phoneme system and also the sen uh, sentence structure, the syntax, and um, those are that those are the basic aspects that uh, one should be familiar with, and then uh, if you go higher up, uh, how to teach comprehension, uh, how to teach vocabulary, uh, mm -hmm. those are important. Okay, great. Anything else you want to add, thinking about teachers around the world, early literacy? Yeah, well, you know, good preparation, <laughs> that's important, and I think it all comes to teacher preparation at the university level, and also the textbooks. We have found that even the textbooks give wrong information and they do not provide really uh, the systematic explicit uh, uh, instruction procedures so that should be kind of looked into. Mm -hmm.